Hello, pro wrestling fans and people who randomly clicked on this video. I'm the Pro Wrestling Outsider. Matches like Will Ospreay vs. Nick Wayne at GCW I Never Loved You are the reason why I watch pro wrestling. Big, splashy emotional storytelling, hard-hitting action, a hot crowd, and incredible athleticism. It was a spectacle, to be sure, but it wasn't lacking in pathos, either. It went beyond just being a great match. It reminded me of why I started watching this stuff in the first place. However, there are wrestling fans and even some wrestling personalities who, because of a few sequences of moves in the middle of this match, would argue that this match not only isn't good pro wrestling, but isn't pro wrestling at all. Why? Why would a match with so many of the hallmarks of what I consider great pro wrestling have its mere status as pro wrestling questioned by these people? To start, though, let me back up a bit. Now, I don't want to discount Nick Wayne or his work with what I'm about to say. Nick Wayne just turned 17 years old. Yes, you heard that right. 17. The things he can do in the ring would be deeply impressive at any age, let alone his age. The body of work that he's put out so far is frankly incredible for someone so young and so early in his career. Some people go their entire careers without having matches as good as some of the matches he's had, especially this one. I'd encourage you to go on Cage Match, look at what he's done, and track some of his matches down. Link in the description. However. This match was definitely a Will Ospreay production, TM. If you've ever seen an Ospreay match before, it's very clear that he structured and designed the main meat of this match and led Wayne through it. So, I'm going to focus on Ospreay's style quite a lot in this video. Will Ospreay is a pretty controversial figure in modern pro wrestling. He's very well known in wrestling circles for his athleticism, his over-the-top mannerisms, and his maximalist, go-big-or-go-home style of match structure. Hallmarks of his matches include lots of flips, lots of high-impact signature spots that are tailor-made to get live crowds on their feet no matter how many times he does them, rapid bursts of fighting spirit, and lots of quick, intricate, and some would say choreographed sequences of counters, followed by more counters, followed by even more counters. These sequences are often the climactic moments of his matches. Some people love his stuff. Some people hate it. Osprey is very good at splitting opinions of himself right down the center. Full disclosure, Osprey has also been guilty of some pretty scummy behavior on social media in the past. I've decided that I can't do the whole situation justice, so I'll leave it at that. I encourage you to do your own research and draw your own conclusions. My views on Osprey are that his matches can occasionally be overbearing and that some of his moves can look overly telegraphed, but that his style overall is enjoyable and exciting. In a lot of ways, he's like the Michael Bay of pro wrestling. He's the ultimate maximalist. He doesn't know how to edit himself. He throws everything but the kitchen sink into his matches and would probably throw one of those in too if he had one. The stories in his matches are big and stupid. Even then, though, they would occasionally get drowned out by all the athleticism and big moves early on in his career. He has since toned that down, however, and I think his matches have improved because of it. His mannerisms, especially as a heel, are incredibly over the top. He's at a 10 all the time. The main difference between him and Bay, though, is that I mostly can't stand Michael Bay with a few exceptions, and that I generally really enjoy Osprey. I think that his maximalist sensibilities fit in with the inherently maximalist sensibilities of professional wrestling very well. This is a genre of performance art that's all about standing out, and Osprey definitely stands out. Recently, Osprey has had a string of really strong performances across a number of promotions. The two most highly praised matches he's had in the past month have been against Dax Harwood on AEW Dynamite and the subject of this video, the match against Nick Wayne on GCW's I Never Liked You. Out of those two matches, 
I think I preferred Osprey versus Harwood as far as the actual action goes, but Osprey versus Wayne has more depth storytelling wise and is more fun to talk about. So, onto the actual match itself. While the match itself may have been very clearly structured by Will Ospreay, the story behind this match is very much Nick Wayne's story. Nick Wayne is the 17-year-old prodigy of the American indie scene and is a future AEW star, having already been handed a provisional contract by Darby Allin himself. The story goes that he was left off of GCW's big show at the Hammerstein Ballroom, The World on GCW. Joey Janela said that, as a consolation for not being on the show, he would work on getting him his dream match. Any match he wanted against any talent in the world. Nick Wayne named his idol. His idol is Will Ospreay. The story is centered around Wayne facing off against the man he looked up to the most and truly proving himself against someone who started off not thinking much of him. Osprey enters the match very clearly looking down on Wayne, thinking of him as a little kid who can't hang with him. This becomes clear when, shortly after the match starts, Osprey pats him on the head condescendingly. And then again. He runs circles around Wayne at first, but then something starts to happen. Wayne outmaneuvers Osprey, takes him down, and then pats him on the head. <laughs> It becomes clear that Wayne may be on Osprey's level when it comes to agility. And as the match goes on, it becomes clear that he might be even more agile than Osprey. Osprey immediately starts taking him more seriously. Throughout the match, a dynamic becomes apparent. Osprey is larger, stronger, and more experienced. This gives him the edge when it comes to ring awareness and absorbing punishment. This also makes him the better striker, often taking Wayne down with just one or two shots while Wayne needs a whole flurry to take him down to the mat. Wayne, however, is able to outmaneuver Osprey and counter a good portion of his offense based on raw skill, instincts, and athleticism. The commentary also alludes to the fact that both men have watched tape of each other extensively and that Wayne has prepared for this match, which makes the extensive series of counters and the way they're able to predict each other's movements make a lot of sense. Now, the crowd is rowdy and eats this story up. They're very much on Wayne's side and boo Osprey loudly throughout most of the match. Osprey leans into this heavily by antagonizing the crowd and Wayne. His heel work is very showy, at times overbearing, but it fits his cocky, egotistical character and really helps Wayne to shine instead of taking any of that shine away from him. It just makes the crowd even louder when Wayne stages his comebacks and makes them want to see him win more. The story isn't the only thing that the fans were reacting to, however. They were reacting to a freaking incredible athletic spectacle. Here comes Nick Wayne, he's back up, all the way to the top rope now. Poison Rock no! lands on his feet! Osprey lands on his feet! What agility, and Nick Wayne can't believe it! Unbelievable. Will Osprey's like, I've seen your footage, motherfucker. I know what you do. I know all about the Poison Rana. Forearm shot from Nick Wayne. Off the ropes he comes. Oof. Avoids the insecurity. Knee strike from Nick Wayne, going for the dragon suplex, he gets it! Got all of it, don't turn your back on Osprey! Went for the cutter, but blocked by Osprey. He, he was doing Jordan Oliver's cloud cutter there, but he couldn't get it, boys! <laughs> he gets it, right on his head, like, on! Two! Oh, Jesus! Two and three quarters! Wayne looking to follow up! But Osprey's too quick! Sunset bomb off the second rope by Osprey and both men are down again. Seriously, I just cannot say enough about how incredible the climactic sequences in this match are. The amount of trust and precision required to pull this off and get the audience to believe in it is insane. One moment sticks out to me. This kick right here. This single ducked kick. 
I can't get over how good it looks and how much skill and anticipation of movement it would take to duck the kick and then immediately deliver that knee in sequence. Freaking awesome. Seeing a kid this young do something that amazing made me forget the recent malaise I've felt regarding a lot of what's been going on in pro wrestling and just sit back and appreciate the craft of it all. There are too many awesome athletic moments in this match for me to count. Like this one. Osprey, butterfly in the arms. Wayne goes up across the shoulders of Osprey. Wayne turns it around and brings it to the notes. Or this one. Nick Wayne. Nick Wayne has the decorated veteran in trouble. Fisherman suplex for the bridge. One, two. Seriously, I could do this all day. No, Nick Wayne cannot be denied. O'Connor roll, reaching back. He got no. Only two. Another kick from Nick Wayne. Knee strike. Huge knee, Osprey's down. Lockhart got turned around. Osprey connects. And again, hooks the leg. leg, two. No, Nick Wayne with the shoulder up. Now, Osprey does do some of his familiar spots in this match, but he weaves them together with new stuff and builds off of Nick Wayne to provide the perfect balance of familiarity and innovation, in my opinion. It works really well. I'm not going to spoil the ending of the match or the heartwarming post-match promo because I really think you should watch it for yourself. I'll put a link to the fight replay in the description. I'll just say that I feel like it resolves the story quite well. Now, this match isn't perfect. There are a couple moments where Osprey is very obviously getting into position to feed into Wayne's moves. He also does do some familiar stuff that doesn't feel quite as fresh as it used to. There is also the issue of selling. If you want a match where everyone sells every move like a shotgun blast, this isn't the match for you. In my opinion, the selling is fairly decent, and I really like the disparity between the way Wayne sells Osprey's strikes and Osprey sells Wayne's. However, there are a couple instances where they're up and running around after big moves or where they undersell kicks to the face. It's not as video gamey as some other matches like this, as Wayne is a very good seller and Osprey's match structure has improved over the years, but Osprey matches will always have a certain level of no selling and it's up to you whether or not it's too much. These flaws don't hurt the match all that much in my opinion though. They don't compromise the story or make the athletic spectacle any less impressive. This was a hell of a match, blending a solid story, pathos, and athleticism quite well. A 9 out of 10 from me. Now, my opinion of this match is a common one, as it's sitting pretty at a 9.19 average out of 10 on cagematch.net. However, it's not the only opinion. Clips of this match blew up on wrestling Twitter, getting thousands of likes. In addition to the people praising these clips, some detractors started to gather. These detractors argued that the match, based on these clips, was bad pro wrestling. Beyond that, though, some of them argued that this match wasn't even pro wrestling at all. Their arguments stemmed from the idea that the sequences in these clips were choreographed, that they were unrealistic, that they were closer to a dance routine than to real pro wrestling, and that intricate sequences like this have no place in professional wrestling. The mere existence of intricate sequences in this stage wrestling match between wrestlers in a wrestling ring, to them, makes it something other than wrestling. Now, these people are entitled to their opinion as to whether or not the match is good, but to say that this match isn't even pro wrestling is so wrong-headed that I don't even know where to begin. You can trace a clear line of the history of more acrobatic moves in wrestling from this match all the way back to the early 90s, or even earlier if you know where to look. 
Osprey got his style from watching AJ Styles in TNA, who took clear inspiration in his moveset from guys like Eddie Guerrero and Too Cold Scorpio. All of these guys, guys from an age where wrestling was wrestling according to these people, wrestled a style filled with acrobatics that, yes, looks choreographed. It's been there for decades, and no, it's never looked realistic. You can even find footage of wrestlers doing flips and stuff from the 50s and 60s. Sure, it hasn't always looked exactly like this, but it still looked choreographed and far out of the realm of what could happen in a real fight. If you're okay with Too Cold or Eddie hitting a frog splash on an opponent who lays there waiting for himself to be splashed for several seconds, but Osprey versus Wayne isn't wrestling, you're just splitting hairs based on what you like and don't like. And it's fine that you don't like it. Some flippy stuff goes too far for me and grates on me too. Embrace the fact that you don't like it. Let yourself be a hater sometimes. But to call wrestlers wrestling in a wrestling ring not wrestling because they do things you don't like is pure silliness. It's no true Scotsman at its finest. Some of them also acted like the existence of some tightly choreographed spots mean that this match has no storytelling. That it lacks the hallmarks of great pro wrestling. A face versus heel dynamic, a strong story, a real reason to cheer beyond popping for big moves, and I hate this term and I feel dirty saying it, but ring psychology. Now, this could not be further from the truth. As I outlined earlier, Osprey vs. Wayne told a pretty solid story about Osprey gaining respect for Wayne, realizing his talent and agility were at or near his level, and treating him like a serious competitor. There was also a clear face vs. heel dynamic, and a difference in strength and power between the two that assisted the dynamic. Osprey was the stronger, more experienced, bullying heel and Wayne was the smaller, more agile babyface who sold more and sold well. There was actual thought put into their dynamic. Now, this means that by the standards of people hating on this match based on those clips, there was some actual <sighs> ring psychology in this match. Oh, wow. It's like everything you criticize this match for, ha for not having is in the actual match. It's almost like you can't judge anything based on tiny clips that you see on the internet. It would be like me saying that Deadpool is a non-violent romantic comedy after seeing the opening scenes. That is not what Deadpool is, and I'd be stupid and wrong for saying so. So why are we doing this with wrestling matches? Come on, guys. The idea that Will Ospreay versus Nick Wayne isn't wrestling is silly to me because it has all of the hallmarks of what I want from pro wrestling. Good storytelling, great action, amazing athleticism, a hot crowd, and moments that made me sit up in my chair and go, whoa. It made me glad that I watched this stuff after a lot of wrestling has left me cold recently, story-wise. I'm finding it harder and harder to care about the criticisms of this style or even take them seriously because big splashy emotional matches like these are the only thing cutting through the crushing dullness of modern wrestling's bland aesthetics. Wrestling is supposed to be fun and dynamic and show you stuff that you never thought was possible and matches like this go above and beyond the mediocrity that the big companies often settle for and show the full extent of what is possible. This match made me happy. That's the long and short of it, really. It, it made me happy. If matches like this aren't pro wrestling, I'm more than comfortable with leaving regular pro wrestling behind so that we can have more of whatever this is. Thankfully, though, we don't have to. Will Ospreay vs. Nick Wayne isn't just pro wrestling. It's pro wrestling at its finest. Thank you very much for watching. Sorry that it's taken me so long to put another video out. And as a bit of an addendum, the main meat of this video was recorded before Forbidden Door, 
So when I talk about Osprey's most acclaimed matches, I obviously didn't include Osprey versus Orange Cassidy because it kind of hadn't happened yet. Anyway, if you liked the video, hit like. If you didn't, hit dislike. Let me know in the comments what pro wrestling means to you, what your definition of it is. And if you want to see more videos from me, hit subscribe and the bell to see more. I'll see you next time.